Raider Catan, come on. Oh! We're in! Okay, I just reset the the auto match and um, okay, we're in. Okay, so Catanians, this is Greater Catan scenario on Seafarers. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole board here. And this tutorial assumes you know base Catan. So let me open up my summary that you can find on the Catan Universe Almanac. And then we will get underway for this tutorial example gameplay. Let me just make sure that's the right one. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. So let me place my starting settlements per usual, then I'll be with you shortly for some explanation. So this is a four player match. All my other scenario or tutorials have been three player. But Greater Catan is hard to auto match with uh, if you select just three player or maybe just four player. So I selected three or four to actually be able to get into a match to bring you this example gameplay. So we're going to go to 18 victory points with four players. And I believe you go to 21 with three players. It's either 20 or 21. You have a 90 second round timer. And on this board, as you can see, you have the main island that you would be familiar with from Base Catan. However, you also have two additional islands on the sides that have no numbers on them whatsoever. So you may be wondering what is going on with that. But all will be explained. First, let me place. I'm going last. So I have a... I have a unique opportunity here. Now I'm looking at this 569, and we also have 5910, but that would provide me with zero wood, which would not be good. So I'm thinking about 348 as my second settlement, because I'll start with the road to get me out to one of the ports, because you're going to want to get to these islands with no numbers on them, and I will explain why soon. But let me first place on... I think I'm going to go 569 for the sheep and the ore, and then 348 for the, the rest of what I need. And I really think it's going to be that straightforward for me, so let's um, give it a shot. And then I will choose to build to the 341 ports. And then for my second settlement, 348 on the brick, wood, and wheat. And the sky is the limit, so I will build out and either grab the brick port or preferably the wheat port so I can build again on the eight wheat and get that much more wheat for me. So pink will go ahead and go for the 2-6 uh, the double sheep spot and the sheep port, which is pretty smart because now they can build a ship since it's a coastal settlement placement. They could build a road inland, a road off the two, a road off the six, but they will choose to build a ship, which is the wisest course of action. <clears throat> because once they get to this uh, left island here, oh, and orange just decides to completely screw over me and red by building on the wheat port directly. And they build a ship out to the brick hex on the left island, and thus I will have to get into the explanation here. So they just revealed a 5. Now, when I go into my explanation, Greater Catan, the Catanians are busy are busily settling the neighboring islands. But soon, resources on Catan itself become scarce. City limit. In this scenario, each player may build up to 8 cities. So from base Catan, or any other seafarer scenario, you can build up to 4 cities. Everyone um, would know that by now. Um, if you haven't played Catan at all, this is just going to be blowing your mind. So go play base Catan, go learn that, and then you can come here. So you can build up to eight cities in this specific scenario. Resource depletion. As soon as a player reaches the edge of one of the small island terrain hexes, i.e. orange building the ship to touch the brick hex, then that terrain hex is assigned a number token. So they revealed a 5. Why did they reveal a 5 out of all numbers? Let's continue on. The first four number tokens are taken from the supply. So if you played uh, Catan 
in person and you have that bag of numbers and you place numbers on your 19 hexes on the um, the you know first island base katan board you have numbers left over in the bag so that's the supply so you don't really see a supply in um, on katan universe anywhere but just know that there is a supply and the first four hexes that are touched on either the left or the right island you a number will just be revealed there because it's taken from the supply so the first four numbers are like freebies okay so with with that being said I'm gonna choose to um, go to the three phone port first secure the three phone port gain another wood hex and then I can work on brick port getting out to that island and then I'll pass I also have an outlet where if I can't get out to the left island, I'll build a 3 phone port and then r race over to the right island. And it's going to be, it'll become clear later on why you want to get off the main island as soon as you can. So the first four number tokens are taken from the supply. Once the supply is exhausted, so in other words, once um, three more of these hexes are touched and three more token number tokens from the supply are placed on the on those hexes then this is what's going to happen next once the supply is exhausted the active player must remove a number token from the main island instead so all, let's say four numbers are already discovered and placed on any of these uh, left or right island hexes then you actually take a number off of the main island and put it on to the a new uh, resource hex that you that you've now touched first before anybody else on the left or right island. So I rolled the seven. I'm looking for the brick. Let's go to the game log. They rolled a four. No brick there. Seven, six, twelve, six, ten. Yeah, no brick whatsoever. But I'm looking at pink being the power player here. If they build on that ore port, it's kind of over. So, uh, let's shut down their sheep production though. And I will steal from pink. It's going to be a sheep, not what we want, but we'll pass. If we can get another sheep, we can 4 for 1 for the brick. If we can't get a 3, there goes an 8. So, here are the requirements when an active player who touches a new uh, blank resource hex and when they're getting ready to take a number off the main island to move to that resource hex here are the requirements <clears throat> and these requirement there's three requirements and they're in order so one the numbers six and eight may not lie adjacent to each other on a small island so on this on these extra left and right islands a six and eight can't be next to each other Two, the number token must come from a terrain hex that the active player has a settlement or city adjacent to. So you can only pull a number that uh, from the main island that you're built on. Three, each settlement or city on the main island must remain adjacent to at least one terrain hex with a number token. So let me take my turn and read that again so I can break it down for you. Okay, so there goes a wood. I'm going to four for one the sheet for the brick. And I will settle on the three or four ports and pass. So again, each settlement or city on the main island must remain adjacent to at least one terrain hex with a number token. So in other words, when you're pulling numbers, you can't just, um, for example, let's let's look at the. Um, my settlement here on the five six nine I can't just steal the five the six and the nine if I just if I touch on three new resource hexes on either left or right island I have to, that settlement has to have at least one number that it can still um, that is still touching that settlement so that settlement can still produce something uh, per the rules so those are the three requirements in that order one two and three and then additionally, should it not be possible to fill all three requirements, then the active player may break them in order from one to three. So if you can't, um, if you can't make, uh, if it comes out to where like you you move the six over to the new island, 
and then like someone stole the five and there's only the nine left for the settlement and that nine can't be moved because five and six are gone and let's say three and four um, are already gone then you can actually rip the eight off from my green settlement if I touch a new island or touch a new land hex and then I could have six and eight next to each other um, and then number two the number token must come from a train X that the active player is a settlement or city on. So if there's, you know, if if you don't have, if it comes down to where like you don't have any um, numbers that you're built on that are still left on the main island, you can just steal someone else's <clears throat> and move it out to a blank uh, land hex on the left or right island. <clears throat> So it's, uh, it can definitely be confusing, but we'll get into it as we start seeing it play out in this example gameplay. Um, I'm going to... I think I'll leave the robber where it is, but I'm going to actually put the pirate ship here so that Orange can't discover or can't touch this wood hex so soon. Additionally, I'm thinking about the development card... Um, yeah, let's buy the Velma car. If we draw a road building, that'll be clutch. It's a monopoly that will be useful later on. Okay, we'll, we'll hold on to that as we get an 11 here. <clears throat> and then the last thing to read... No, that, that was everything. Okay. So, of course, if you're new to Seafarers, I should also explain about the ships. So if you look down at your building cost card... If you played Base Catan, you're familiar with building roads, settlements, cities, and development cards. And then here's the development card stack. Now, ships are a new thing you can build in Seafarers. It's going to cost a sheep and a wood instead of a brick and a wood for a road. In ships, you get 15 ships and 15 roads in Seafarers. Except for uh, one of the scenarios where you get 30 roads, but I made a tutorial on that. It's called the Oasis. But in this scenario of Seafarers you can build ships that are off of a coastal settlement or city. So for example, Orange built the coastal settlement on the wheat port and they built the ship off of it and into the water. So the ship has to can only be built on the coastline or into the water. It cannot be built um, between, you know, land, it can't be built inland in between land hexes. Only roads can be built there. Now the, the interesting thing is when you build a ship once per turn after you've built it on the on a future turn you'd actually move that ship to a different um co like different uh open settlement area that's touching the water or a different um shipping route so for example let's say that orange built up to the three for one port and placed a settlement there they built three roads to get there and they closed off that road system with another settlement now they're open to decide, oh, okay, instead of building roads after the settlement on the 3 front port, I could build ships instead. But I don't have any uh, sheep and wood in hand, so if they had an open ship off of this um, shipping route, they could actually move it all the way up here to the 3 front port and point it out to the top side of this left island, let's just say. Okay, so I'm going to take my turn. It's a 3. I'll take it. Didn't expect it, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the brick port, and I'll pass my turn. Now, Orange cannot move either of these ships, and for two separate reasons. So they can't move the first ship because the pirate ship was placed there by me in that water hex. And the pirate ship acts like the robber, where if, um, if you shut down a water hex and someone has ships there, you steal a card from them if they have cards, and... You also, that player can also not move any ships surrounding that water hex where the pirate ship was placed. Uh, the other reason that Orange can't move this other ship is even though this ship right here isn't um, affected by the pirate ship, they closed off their two length shipping route with another settlement. So it's whenever you have, you build a settlement after, you know, you're, you've built out ships, you now have ships in between those two settlements, and they're now those ships are locked in forever. You can no longer move them uh, once per turn at all. 
So you had that flexibility, unlike with roads, where when you place a road, the road is permanent. It can no longer be moved for the rest of the game. But ships, as long as they, they stay open and they're not being attacked by the pirate ship, you're free to move them once per turn to any other open um, coastal settlement or city spot or other open shipping routes. So I rolled the five. Not much going on. I'm going to wait. I don't think I want to use some Monopoly yet. I should... Um, Oh, lucky two for pink to get the sheep. And they have the sheep ports. Okay, so red comes over here with three ships. Okay, so now the supply of numbered hexes has been exhausted. So we've discovered, uh, orange discovered a five and a three. And then red discovered a four and a nine. So now the four numbered hexes from the supply have been used up. So now we're in a situation where if red builds one more ship to this brick hex, they're going to rip a number off of the main island that they are built on. Now the crazy thing is th they can rip a uh, number hex that they're built on and that they share with someone else. That way that other player also doesn't get that production anymore for the rest of the game. Okay, there goes a seven, and the only thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place the pirate ship here so that it shuts red down from building up to the brick hex and and ripping a number off the main islands. So let's do that now. It's gonna be a wheat, not exactly what I want, but I will uh, pass it and we will, if we could get a couple big nines, I could build a city. But I do hope for the settlement first. Okay, so I have exclusively, exclusively, wheat and sheep. Big nine, big nine. Or a seven, of course. Okay, so we'll burn, yeah, the sheep and the three wheats. Okay, it'll be the five sheep. They steal from red. Good choice, good choice. See, like I was saying, in Seafarers, you can either choose to move the pirate ship or the robber, but you can only move one um, when you roll a seven. Now, you could combo that where if you already bought a knight the previous turn, you can actually, um, you could roll a, if you happen to roll a seven, you can move the pirate ship, and then you could play the knight and then you can move either the robber or the pirate ship again. So there is a nice combo effect you can do with that. Um, I could buy the development card, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out. I um, I'm either gonna build a city or uh, go for the settlements on my next turn. Okay, that's a big three. So now I just need the wood, and the four and the ten are open. Oh, nice Euro plenty by orange. So of course in Seafarers, your development card stack is the same. You can still get Euro plenties, monopolies like I have, road building, uh, victory point cards, and knight cards. Largest army is still a thing you can acquire. There's a big four. So I have the settlement in hand. <clears throat> so pink secures the ore port. Now eights will give them double ore and they have a two for one trade in if they want. They build a ship to discover a nine or discover a 10. And actually my rules state that the first four number tokens are taken from the supply, but that may be just for three player because as you can see, they discovered a 10 and I guess there's five numbered hexes in the supply with four players. Maybe there's only four numbered hexes in the supply with three players. So that's a three. I will settle here. And do 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 do. I could city up. Uh, 
Uh, let me divide a development card. If I could draw a road building, that would be huge. It's a knight. Okay. We'll pass with that. Ooh, the five being shut down. That's... Oh, that is not good. Uh, followed by another five. That would have been two sheep right there. So the the thing you need to weigh in here, okay, so the first number is being taken off the main island right here because Orange built the road to this wood hex. So the thing you need to weigh is you could build some cities up on the main island, but when those numbers get ripped off, you lose that production. And then that city, in effect, becomes useless for that hex. So they actually ripped a six um, off of the six sheep, so now Pink only gets sheep off a of two now. So that's the scary part, where if you stay too long in the main island, and you lose some key numbers that you need, as another five gets rolled, that's three sheep right there that I missed out on, then you could end up in a situation where you're not getting the production you need to get off the island, um, and then you're kind of stuck. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're playing Greater Catan. Okay, so orange is definitely doing... I'm going to throw the knight out. And I'm going to have to... I think orange is... Pink is definitely slowed down by missing out on the, uh, the sheep there. So I'll shut down orange's brick production. And I'll steal a sheep. And I'll roll dice for a nine. Okay, so again, I have the possible city, or in, in upcoming city. I could port the ore for a wood, build one ship. Not a whole lot of cards out there. I think I'm going to buy another development card. If I could just get that. Okay, I'll have a, another knight just in case. And there's a seven. <clears throat> and I think the knight is key because if they move the pirate ship over to my area, then I can have a way to get rid of it instead of being stuck. I'm trying to hope for a seven to get rolled to move the pirate ship if they happen to put it in one of these water hexes over here. another seven okay so red put it on pink so let's see if pink puts a parachute right back on red so they can because uh, they want to oh they don't they don't for the race to the brick hex I'm surprised okay my turn I could move it off the eight Unfortunately, 8 is not... I don't really need the wheat, so I'm going to roll, see what happens here with the 6. And remember, the 6 got moved from the sheep hex on the main island over to the wood hex. So, even though it got rolled, orange has to go build on it to eat to get that production. So, um, we're still... they're still waiting on that. So, I have a sheep in hand. So, now I'm going to look for some wood here. And there's the 10. Okay, so as long as I don't get any cards stolen, I will prepare for a ship to be built and okay so red builds to the brick let's see what they steal I think they can steal that eight if they want because there's no sixes or eights uh, yep oh they steal the six. Oh wow okay so I lost the sheep hex there uh, sweaty palms sweaty palms as the eight gets rolled okay so pink got the two ore from the eights and then the six get rolled, so I no longer get sheep from that, so that is not good at all. So I'm glad I have the Monopoly in my back pocket, because I may need it if um, I can't get the production that I need. Um, I'm going to... I'll just roll dice. It's a five. Okay, so I do get a sheep there. 
Um, unfortunately, I need another wood. So what I'm going to do... I'll try to offer a trade. Maybe I should offer a brick. So if I get that second wood, I can build the two ships this turn instead of having to only build one. Okay, let's try to straight up brick for wood trade. Red says no, the other two got no from pink and anything from orange. Nothing. Okay, so I'll build the ship. And I will pass. I could try to throw the knight on the chance to steal a wood, but I get the wood right there from the four. Okay, so let's let's go. And ever a lot of four production there. Orange gets two wood. Pink and red each get a wheat. Red also gets a sheep. Okay, so red builds out to the ore hex on the right side here. And they can't steal an eight, so this eight wheat is safe for now on the main island. But they steal the ten, so I lose one of my wood productions. So you, you see how scary this becomes. I've lost out on two um, wood hexes, or two main island hexes of wood and sheep. I just need to get enough production to get out to this island here. That's why I want to draw a road building. I could sneak down to the 5-6. If I could build on that, I could secure, secure some wood and brick production for the later on game. And you see the score is still pretty low. 4-4-4 four, four, four to 6 victory points. We're going all the way to 18. Okay, they build a ship. And they're going to build another one. I think they're porting their ore for the for the wood that they need <clears throat> and they rolled an 8 and got yeah so they're gonna rip a number off the island and thankfully it's nothing I that's uh, that I'm touching they could steal the 8 they're gonna steal the 3 okay so now we have 1 2 3 4 numbered hexes that have been ripped off the main island so the the production of the main island is starting to become more scarce so that is why I so, uh, and they have zero cards, so I can throw the knight to the eight, but not yet. That's why I say get off the main island when you can, because my ten is gone now. So I'm going to. That's the other thing. If I build the ship to the sheep, then I got to rip an, a number off. Then I'm going to lose that production. So. I'll build the ship down here for now because I don't want to lose the production until I can guarantee I can build a settlement on this left island. So I'm going to build that that ship there and I could throw the knights uh, but not yet and I, I may have to end up using this monopoly for a clutch play as a two of all things gets rolled. <clears throat> Low nines this game, I feel like. So there goes a six, and my six is gone now. Yeah, only three nines so far. I wonder if I should... Okay, there's the seven. Uh, hopefully the robber comes off the eight. Oh, the pirate ship. Wow, okay. That's that's a huge setback. Because I was going to use the, the knight for the robber, but now I may have to use it for the pirate ship. Um, let's roll first. It's another six, and I see I get nothing there. Yeah, we're, we're in a rough spot here. Okay, finally we get a big nine. Okay, there's a seven. Well, orange.
orange move the robber? Yes. Okay, so we have the eight open. Because that's our only weak production. That we can still get wood and sheep. The four and the five. A three will be good because I'll get two brick and I can port it at my brick port. Oh no, he's going to settle there, isn't he? On the five, six. Oh, he's going to touch the wheat hex. And he rips the nine off the board. His own nine. Because he couldn't pull the eight because the, the six is already there on the left island. And the sixes and eights can't be next to each other on the extra islands until you get to the point where you have to start breaking those three rules. A seven from pink. They put the robber right back on the eight. I steal from orange. Okay. Okay. Um, I think I had to play the knight. I think I have to get it off the eight wheat. And I'll put it right back on pink's eight ore. Or actually, in if it, ah, it could be a monopoly. Nah, not yet. Not yet. I'll steal a brick from them. It's a six. Oh no. We, we've see when we lost that six, that really uh, changed the game. So I played the knight, so now I can't really do anything about this pirate ship yet. And the ten <clears throat> that was stolen from my wood hex over here is gone. So I'm, I'm literally playing on three, four, five, eight, nine right now. I do get a good nine roll there. And if Orange builds one more road, they're going to get to the Sheep Hex before me. And pull a number off the main island. See, there's the, there's the 10. Okay, there's a 7, so I'm going to move the Pirate Ship now, thankfully. And... Okay, Red's production has been very low, so I don't really have to shut them down. So I can continue to shut down Pink, I would... Actually, I'm going to shut down Orange, because I don't want them getting to this um, Sheep Hex before me. So I'll shut down Orange, I'll grab a Brick, and then... Oh, I, I want to ship settle on the 5-6 really bad, but... I'm just not quite there yet. If I move the ship to the sheep hex, what number do I pull? I, I need them all still. If only I could build one more ship. I'm going to port the ore for the wood. Then I'll pass. I gotta I gotta hope I can get another sheep in hand. Okay, there's a big three. Oh no, I should have ported the brick. I should have ported the brick as well. There goes the knight. I get a brick stolen that pulls me. Oh, they moved the pirate ship. Wow, what a play. What a play. Another six gets rolled. I guess I should have moved the ship then. Okay, there's a good five. Okay, back to me. I kind of want to roll a seven, but I do have eight cards. So I kind of don't. <sighs> okay, I rolled a seven. Both the ore and the brick. And pirate ship. Going back out. I'll move it to red because even if orange beats me to the sheep spot, it'll be a hex I can build on. So move it to red. I'll get a sheep, which is not too bad. Um, orange has four cards. I want to, if I can make a play for that five, six spot, I think I have to try. So there goes a ship, and... This is this is so close, but we'll see what happens here. There's a four. I get the wood, but so does orange. 
I just need a wheat. Uh, wheat for a wood. I can't do that because I. Oh no! Orange takes it. Okay, so if orange can settle here. It's it's over. There's a nine. Okay, they pass. There's an eleven. What a crazy game. Nine. Okay, so four. There is some wheat on the board. Okay, there's a five. Okay, I, ha I have to settle now. Um, so, red built a settlement so they don't have a wheat, or have one less wheat. Um, orange has the wheat. And pink has a wheat, but that's not a whole lot of wheat. Um, I don't want to use a Monopoly just yet, but in order to secure the settlement spot, I will do it. It's only two wheat, but I have to take it. Here's the settlement. And I closed off that shipping route. I could buy a development card, um, but I don't think I should do that right now. I'm going to wait to get it. If I can get one more wood, I'm going to build out to the sheep spot. Yes, there goes a seven, and of course, being red, they're probably gonna move the pirate ship over to the water hexes there. Yep, they steal the ore, so I could go the long way around to the wheat hex up up here. I do have that option. So I'm barely on the left island. I am on the five six, but this just goes to show you: red is more established, um, pink is more established. Orange finally builds up to the sheep hex with the road because pirate ship does not affect the road, as you see. And they steal the five, so I no longer have the five sheep, but I can get over to it, hopefully, within a timely manner. And I'm glad I'm on the five brick as well because I still have the brick port, so they still have that working for me. And the six is paying off now that I'm on the six wood. So as you can see, it's the game you could be doing really well on the on the starting island in Greater Catan, but you see how the game the tide changes later on, because once the numbers start getting taken off the main island, whoever is built starting to build up on the left and right island, they're the ones that are really going to start running away with the game. So I'm going to build a ship, and then I just need oh now I don't have any sheep production. So I gotta hope for some brick production of port for the sheep. See, okay, there's the five. I do have a five though. It's a brick, so now I can port the brick and my brick port to get the sheep that I can no longer produce just to get over to the wheat spot. And I'll be um, ripping a number off the main island, unfortunately, but if I can move the pirate ship out, I could just build the ship directly to the five. And I could have that option. But this was a huge win for me to get on the five six before orange, because if I if orange beat me to that spot, I I, I may have just uh, been playing a losing tutorial example gameplay for you all as another ten gets rolled, and you can see red is just slowly but steadily getting production because now they have four numbers that they're built on on the right island. And on the main island, they really only have an 11 brick and the 8 wheat. That's it. And pink is also smart to build on the 3, 10, and 6. Because on the main island, they literally only have 2 and 8. That's it. I had to say something about the 2, didn't I? Okay, so at this point, let's port the brick for the sheep. And I'm going to have to touch on this wheat hex here. Oh, okay, so because for some reason it's telling me so per the rules this gets kind of wacky because there's no six or eight next for next to this wheat hex, but somehow I can take any one of these open numbers that no one's built on. Um so I'll take the five. And I'll pass, but that doesn't really add up to me because I thought the requirements were you take from the numbers you're touching on first. Um, 
leaving at least one number left open. So I have the nine. I think is is staying for a while because this settlement here has blank sheep spots with no numbers. So I thought I'd be taking from three, four, eight, but I guess I can't take the eight because red has a blank sheep and a blank wood, and I can't take the four because orange has a blank sheep and brick. Um, I don't know why I can't take the three though. I should have been able, it should have had me take the three I would think. Let me take a look here. Number six and eight may not lie adjacent to each other on a small island. The number token must come from a train X that the active player has a settlement or city on. Or, yeah, a settlement or city adjacent to. And then each settlement or city on the main island must remain adjacent to at least one train X with a number token. Hmm. So I would think the... I would have had to take the three, but the game had me take a hex that no one was built on. <sighs> Interesting. So, because I can't take the eight ore, because pink would have a city or have a settlement with a blank brick and wheat and ore, and you can't have that. There goes another eight. Okay, so. I will build, I will port, ooh, this is tough. I'll port the wheat and the brick for the ship, the wood and the sheep. Because I can't quite get the city out. I'm actually pretty close. I might want to save for the city on the 5-6 actually. Yeah, let me do that instead. Because if I can city up on 5-6, that'll help my production out long term as another 10 gets rolled. And red cities up. So when you city up on the left or right island, that just really um, sets you up for that long term. And there's a big 9. I'll take that. Although we do have 8 cards, so I'm a little worried. Of course, about a 7. And orange gets the settlement on the 5-9. Okay, that's a four. I'll take that. I'll absolutely take that. So now, even if I roll a seven, I burn four cards, but I still keep five, which means I can still get the, the city out. Uh-oh. Pink builds a ship off the left side of the board towards the left island. So now, could be in a, in a potential race with them. They touch the desert, but of course the desert is just desert. You don't pull a number off the main island. There's another four. Okay, so I will city up on five, six, as I said. And then I will pass the dice. And I'm looking to build on the five, five spot. Uh, so it's really a race. I'm racing pink and orange, because I'm not sure if pink's gonna challenge me for, if they build on five desert, then I can't build on just five. I have to go five, this other five five spot. But if orange can race me for it, then um, I'm gonna be in a bit of a pickle because I built on the five six, but I can't build anywhere else off the five six because orange is surrounding my city on either side with roads. So they rolled the seven, they moved the robber over to the six brick, which is fine by me. I still don't have any sheep production, which is why I'm hoping to get on the five sheep and five wheat instead of just the five wheat. Okay, another big six. I'm hoping for a five or a three so I can at least port the brick for the sheep. It's a seven. Okay. Um, I think I will. I'll leave the pirate ship there, because it, I don't want orange having that um, option of building a ship or a road. So I'll just simply throw the robber. I think red is still doing very good. So I'll shut down their 
ore production there. Or is there anything better to shut down? Eh, not really. So I'll shut down their ore. I'll steal an ore. Hey, another city if I want. And then I'll port the wood for a sheep. And now I just need to get three more cards so I can settle on the five, pair of fives. And then red plays a knight. And steals from me immediately. But I do roll, a three gets rolled? Okay. Again, I don't produce sheep, but I just, I'm pretty close now. If I can just get, there's a seven. Orange may throw the robber back to the six brick on the other side of the board. Because red still does have that nine point lead and the longest road. They also have two knights played as well as I, so while I'm focused on building this settlement, they could buy another, another knight from the development card stack and get the largest army. So there's always that. Um, BRB. And we're back. Oh, wow, of course it got all the way to my turn that quick. Uh, the robber did get, did get moved to the six brick like I anticipated. Um, unfortunately, I could buy the development card. I'm going to hold, though. I'm going to hold what I got. Okay, that's a big three. Uh, actually, you know, I should have ported the brick for the sheep that last turn. Of course, I don't produce sheep. So, if I roll a 4 or a 6, I'm good. Or 3, 5, 9. If, honestly, if I roll almost any of my numbers, besides the 8, then I'm doing great. So, yeah, just like with Base Gaton, okay, there's a 9. That's really good. So, this just goes to show you. Um, always, you know, make sure you're staying under 8 cards as often as you can so you don't get burned by the robber and be thinking out a couple plays ahead, a couple turns ahead <sighs> okay it's a six, alright so that, that was actually super ideal so now you can see the production starting to pick up um, but it's still not where I want it to be because I only have a city on the left island but we gotta, we gotta up those numbers so I will actually pour the brick for the sheep because I may want to buy that third development card here I'll city on the pair of fives and actually I'm gonna build the road to the brick before orange can build the road to the brick because I wanna if I can steal another number off the island that can um, slow someone else down and again it's only 10 11 12 um, so I don't know what that's about I'm gonna take the 10 and I'm super close to a city. So I, I'll hold. If I can get the city, I'll do that on the pair of fives. And then the go for the demo, development cards later on. As a lucky 11 gets rolled for red, they city up on the 410. So now they have two cities in a settlement on the right island. And then a 10 gets rolled. That's huge for them. That's absolutely huge. 
So now I need a eight or a five for the wheat. I could also get it off three or five for the with the brick port. And they get a four. Okay, so I think red's gonna be the player to beat. They have a pair of fours. They have two cities on a ten. Pink's gonna try to build on desert five and that's all of them because I'm going inland. I'm going off the 10. I'm going to build a road up to the, this wood hex and pull a number off the island for that. And you see we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers left on the main island, the starting island. When they do settle, no cards left, but they do settle on the 5 wheat. Nine. Okay, so yeah, red is going crazy with production right now. Um, all I'm gonna do is port three ore for a wheat. I'm gonna city up on the fives, and red might may end up buying a development card this turn, but I just gotta let it happen because I gotta get get my production up. Yeah, they get a four. They have. Yeah, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna win this game. I think there's no way around that. Um, but, you know, if I'm going to play the long game, i got to get my production up to have a fighting chance. As a 7 gets rolled, orange will burn 5 cards, rounding down, if you have an odd number of cards, if you're over 7. And then I believe they will shut down either the 9 or the 10, because at this point they're just too crazy. Because now that we're everybody's secured on to the left or right island, the pirate ship becomes less um, of a big shutdown because now we can just build roads inland as he steals from me instead. And he gets a road building. So I gotta hit him up in the game chat. Okay, so he's actually gonna cut me off to the wood and he steals the 11 which was this middle wheat hex. Okay, so I'm... That was good. That was a smart smart play, although I think we should be battling together against red. Um, orange shuts me up, cuts me off to the rest of the island, essentially. So now I'm in a huge pickle, because even though I'm on the 5-5-5-6, five, 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 I have three fives, um, I am in a... I'm going to shut down the 9, get a wood, can't do anything with that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a tough spot here, so red gets the largest army, but I can no longer build out to the rest of the island like I was planning on, instead, I'm going to have to build ships, 1, 2, 3 ships, 4 ships build on a 3 ore, but that's like a, not a good spot. And I kind of had to start out my conquest for Longest Road, a.k.a. Longest Shipping Route, all over again. Unless I build one, two, three, four roads connect up to my uh, shipping route system over here. Okay, another four. Yeah, at this point, I think it, red's just too powerful. I don't think we can stop him. There's an eight. Um, I so instead of building the city, I should have built that one more road up to the wood hex. I would have had uh, more opportunity up there, but now I'm definitely in a pickle here. So okay, so there's a three. There's a Monopoly by Red. Steals the brick. I was going to maybe try to link up my road systems, but... Oh, boy. So, yeah, when you play Greater Catan, it can it can really swing one way later on if um, someone gets out to the left or right island pretty quickly and builds up a couple cities. It's really going to be pretty tough to catch up to them. Um... The other thing I'll say is that the this board, Greater Catan, is not just this one set board with the two islands on the left and right side. 
uh, there are different uh, variations of how the board is set up so do keep that in mind when you're playing this scenario I think sometimes you get a top sometimes you get like three islands I believe like a left and a right island and then one on the top okay there's six really I just need a huge five a huge five for me would give me six cards and orange did not chat me back in the game chat I think they just wanted to cut me off for me building on their 5-6 spot. I guess they were just uh, s a little salty about that, a little saltine cracker. <clears throat> and just the, you know, the the cracker being salty, not the, uh, we are in a, this um, age of uh, anything can be taken in, uh, offensively, but uh, don't cancel me for that. If I got canceled for that, that'd be hilarious. Like, not what I meant, but it taking way out of context. On a uh, stream that is watched by only a couple, and a YouTube playback that will only be watched by a hundred or so people. Okay, so, give me not a big five. So, red gets a huge four, so at this point, the only thing I can think I can do is try to get the longest road. I do have two cities over there on the left island. I could make a play for the right island, but that's it's going to take so much production to get over there. So what I'll do here is I will three wood for the brick and if I build the road I kind of make my intentions clear, but let's I need to build two roads to be able to make sure I can connect up. So I'm just going to hold I don't want to um, alert Red to my intention just yet. The 9 shut down. I'm glad it's on their 9 ore, so I didn't get production there. I do get um, 2 ore. And then, the, okay, they get a road building. The, okay, they steal my 9. Wow, okay. So I, I thought the 3 would be taken first. Okay, and then they steal the 4. So at this point, Red, Red really just has it in the bag. As the 10 gets rolled... Wow. Just wow. So if you have any questions about the Seafarer's Greater Catan scenario, tutorial, about how to play, uh, or if you have different strategies, um, you let me know down in the comments below when you find this on YouTube, and we will we can discuss there. Uh, here we go. Of course it's a 7. 4 resources, so 1 wood two or ah oh, I can't three for one that's that's the worst okay I'll burn all of that and red will be shut down I guess we'll just throw the pirate ship just to keep the robber on the nine we get a wheat from them Wow. I'll build the road. There's not much else I can do. Maybe I could have burned the ore and I would have got the. kept the second wood and then threw from the wheat for the other brick I needed for the other road. But at this point, it, it doesn't really matter much. I don't think I've got a big breakaway five yet. So, Orange didn't answer me in the game chat, they just said, they called Pink stupid, and uh, that's it. And then Red said, great move. So, um, it's too bad. Sometimes with people playing auto match online, they just, we don't work together as a team to undermine a leading player. Which I think is important. Which I think is um, to something to extend the game to give everybody a chance to get back in it. Kind of, I always compare it to Mario Kart, where, you know, if you're in first place, you never know when that blue shell could uh, come at you and pull you back for the other racers to catch up, just to make things interesting. Finally, a big five, but the brick is shut down. So, I will port the wheat for the ore that gets stolen from me by red. I'll buy the development card. It's a victory point. Um, I would have taken the road building of the night, though. And 
and another seven. Red will burn. Will they move the pirate ship and keep the robber there? Yes, they will. And they keep stealing from me. So that's... I, I just want one five where I get six cards of a five. And they build a settlement on the 449. So it's... Their victory is inevitable. It's a huge four for them to get rolled. They get three, six, seven cards. We have 126 dice rolls. So as you can see, Greater Catan does take... Uh, longer than your normal game of base Catan, obviously, in any other Seafair scenario. Uh, also, in the Twitch side of things, Nikki Brianna, thank you very much for the follow. I'm doing this um, Seafair's tutorial, but after that, I will be playing a few viewer matches if anybody's online and down to play. <clears throat> but I'm doing these tutorials because some, sometimes people ask me, how do I play this version of Catan? How do I play Catan in general? How do I play this scenario? What are your thoughts? So that's why I'm doing these tutorials so that I can move them over to YouTube. And uh, the nine gets rolled. Red gets five more cards. I lost my nine ore, so I will just pass as I can do nothing. Uh, another four. I lost my four, so yeah. It's... Now they have four cities on the right island and again you can get up to eight cities in greater Catan. and they're as you can see they're they're supremely unstoppable they may have a couple victory point cards in hand and my numbers have my number diversity has shrunk down to literally just three five six and eight and there's a six but the red also gets a six basically any number I roll Chances are red's also going to get production, except for the 8 um, and the 5. And on the main, the starting island, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers left. And now, both the left and right island, all the numbers, um, all the hexes have been filled with numbers. So there's no more numbers to be pulled off the main island. So the constellation prize is I get, get to keep my 3 and my 8, but the rest of the numbers are gone forever off the starting island. Uh, brick for a wheat? I went... I tried to take that. I was just a hair too slow to accept it. I'll tell Pink to do the trade again. Two brick... there we go. Yes, okay, so I get two brick for a wheat and I will just go for longest road I'll, I'll give it my best shot but of course in seafarers it is called the longest shipping route because it includes roads and ships most often chances are you're not building just exclusively roads or just ex exclusively ships in a game of seafarers it could happen but usually not as a six gets rolled Okay, here's 8, 9, and if I build one more road, it'll be 10, 11, 12, and I'll take the longest road, but red will probably just win on this turn anyways, or they'll be able to take back, and then we, we get another 5, but the brick is still shut down. They steal wood for me, that's clutch. They'll settle for 17, they, they have to have a victory point card in hand. No, they buy a development card. Oh, they did. They definitely had one. Okay, so good game to Red. This has been your tutorial on Greater Catan in Seafarers. Where's my um, post-game analysis, my post-game... Where'd it go? Um, the game just glitched out because I can't show you dice statistics and how many development or victory point cards Red pulled from the development card stack. Other than that, we did get through this gameplay without anybody rage quitting, and we finished a whole game, which I'm surprised by because Greater Catan takes the most amount of time. Usually players will quit um, partway through if they're not doing well, and but we were able to get through and finish an entire game of Greater Catan, which, um, two thumbs up. I'm happy about that. So yes, always 
make sure you get off of everybody was successful in getting off the starting island um, it just ended up that red was able to capitalize on it uh, first well mainly orange did first but they they only had a built on a three and a five red was able to build on the um, the four nine and then eventually the six nine ten and then it four ten and then it just really took off from there because those numbers were really getting rolled a lot so get off the starting island as soon as you can but be careful when you do touch those um, hex blank hexes with no numbers because once the um, in four player Gurkatan, once the five uh, numbered hex supply is exhausted you're kind of pulling it from from the banks so to speak then you start pulling numbers off off the starting island that you're built on in those three um, with those three uh, rules of and I'll read them again just for uh, clarification so after the five in four player and three player it's only four numbers in the supply that you um, put on the blank hexes on the left and right islands and then you start pulling off so the three rules to observe when pulling numbers off the starting island just one more time so sixes and eights can't be next to each other when you're building out when you're touching blank hexes on the left and right islands so when you go to pull a number off the board if there's already a six or an eight next to the blank hex you're, you're um, you just touched you can't pull a six right off the main island number two the number token must come from a drain hex that you're built on <clears throat> and then number three you can't pull a number off a, you can't pull a number you're built on if the other two numbers that that settlement or city you're built on are gone have already been pulled pulled away so for example I was on five six and nine red stole the five and then later the six or actually five I think I, I stole the five, yeah. Someone stole the five, because red couldn't have stolen it over here, because there's no five over here. But the five and the six got stolen, and there was only a nine left on this ore spot. So per the rules, I couldn't take the nine. Um, but once it's not possible to fill those three requirements in order of one, two, and three, then you can start breaking them in order of one, two, and three. So it got to the point where I was taking uh, this wheat hex number, this ore hex number. Later on, I believe um, orange took this wheat eleven, over, became the ore eleven or the wood eleven, because no one was built on them, and you uh, there were so few numbers left to where you know your settlement was touching only one number, and the other two hexes that settlement was touching had no numbers. So that number is kind of locked in and can't be ripped off the, the starting island. So then you, you, you break that rule and you start pulling other numbers that the game tells you you can only pull these numbers. So that's why Greater Catan is it's fun to play online because it's, you know, it's hard to keep track of those, those rules in order from 1 to 3. And then when you break them, it gets confusing. So unless the, um, the physical board game of Catan for Seafarers has this tutorial... If it breaks those rules down into explicit detail, it's kind of hard to follow the rules in person with your friends playing. So just play them. Play the scenario online. Less clean up, obviously. And that has been your tutorial for this scenario. Now we've completed all of the Seafarers tutorials. So I want to thank you all for watching and tuning in for those. And next we will start Cities and Nights tutorials in future streams. And those playbacks will be on YouTube, and where you can watch those and learn how to play these expansions if you've only played Base Catan. Now, when we get into uh, Cities and Knights, yes, it will be assumed that you know how to play Base Catan, but when we, when we get into Cities, Knights, and Seafarers, you're going to want to have played Base Catan and Seafarers before you jump into Cities and Knights with Seafarers, because it's that much more complex. So, something to keep in mind. Thank you all for watching. I don't know how to quit out of Gatan Universe because it, you can see it doesn't...